I got to say this before I forget. I seen you did an uh, interview with me when I was in Halfway House on the parking lot. And when I was talking about Ham, I made a mistake and said Tim Mosley. I meant to say Tim Blue Walker because Tim Mosley was dead. And I don't want people to think because that was he was a bad man. He, that's who got tree uh, shot down you center, but he had got killed. So I, I need him to retract that because I didn't mean to say Tim Moses. I meant to say Tim Blue Walker. Also, when I said, when you asked me what pros did I find, I said Richard Lee, Leon Smoke. When I said Tommy Lay and Curtis Smith Bay, I wasn't saying I fought them. I was saying I trained them, but there was two pros out of the city. But those are two of my best fighters. So I don't want to make it seem like I fought Tommy Lay. He was my champion. He was my light heavyweight, and Curtis Smith Bay was my heavyweight. But they was two bad fighters, man, out of the city with Shaka Robert Mercer and uh, the other brothers. So I don't want people to think that I was saying I fought them. I trained them. You know, I just called Tommy Lay the machine gun because he's a storm, man. So that's the little uh, uh, retraction I wanted to make about that. So if Tommy Lay listen, I want him to know, man, I still think about him. He could have been the champion of the world. Curtis Smith Bay gave me some work. We got in that ring twice, and they said that was two of the best work they ever seen in Lawton. You know what I mean? But but those was my fighters, man. I think about them just like Big Jerry Ballard, who uh, made us number 10 in the world. Uh, but it wasn't Tim Mosley. It was Tim Blue Walker. So I just wanted to straighten that. And we also, man, got to try to find Mr. Watson to get them tapes, man. man. You know, they got tapes of me in the ring, Tommy Lay, Jerry Ballard, all the wrecking crew. You know what I mean? Got me in there cutting up, dancing, and shuffling, and all kinds of stuff, man. So if anybody knows how to get in touch with Mr. Watts, get in touch with Mr. Watts. My last five years young, in Colorado, was it was up and down. It was up and down. And uh, I'm just thankful that I still have some support. You know what I mean? Uh, my nephew Eric was with me all the way. Always was there to catch my calls. My, my god brother Clinton Terry, Lil Keith, they always sent me money. You know, uh, uh, I had some sisters that stuck with me. You know what I mean? Uh, Sal Shakur. The sister that uh, was stuck with me. Uh, you know, all the women and people I had in my life, man, that supported me from my mother, Mona Lisa, uh, Lil Key's mother, Tawana, uh, Fran and Tammy's mother, Kathy, Tina, rest in peace, Kathy, rest in peace, uh, Khadija. I had so many people, man, Lasan, Lady, my lawyers. Uh, Shannon Quill, Ellen Schultz, Elmore Carter, my lawyer in D.C., man, uh, James Schultz, Destiny Fullwood. But, man, I, I had a tremendous support system. Elmore Carter fought for me, and my lawyers in uh, Virginia, Shannon Quill, Ellen Schultz, you, you, you stuck with me. You, you wrote me, stayed in touch, used to send me pictures. But, man, I had a good support system, man, and... Uh, Keisha's mother, Alice, you know, my childhood sweetheart, she stuck with me, never gave up on me, used to write me. And man, uh, it's been a long journey, y'all, um, but March 25th, when they, my lawyer put it in the computer that the judge took that life sentence back, she said, congratulations for coming home. It's like a rebirth, man. You know what I mean? I'm finally, after 50 years, it was 49 at the time. I said, man, I'm going home. So when the warden made his rounds that Monday in June, I stopped at my door. He said, you leaving this week. Where you want to go? Sit right next door. Look, he's listening. Because every day he kept saying, you leaving this week. You leaving. I said, what do you mean where I want to go? He said, you, you going to Virginia. Where do you want to go? To Peaceburg or uh, Cumberland? I said, send me to Petersburg. He said, he'd be gone this week. So I gave Silk all my stuff, gave Hoover something, and uh, 
June 25th, man, they say I got to be out there by quarter to three in the morning before the three o'clock camp. Pop my door. Silk was crying. Who at the door hollering? Put me in the van and drove me from Florence, Colorado to Oklahoma for 10 hours. Handcuffed, leg on the black box in the van. Took me to Oklahoma. Stayed there over the weekend. Then they took me to Philadelphia to a hole in this joint they got in Philadelphia. There's a hole over spot. I stayed there for a few days. Then they drove. Then they took me to Petersburg. And Petersburg kept me there for five days. Then they took me to the halfway house, July the 5th. And the judge said by the time he get out that halfway house in nine months, that'll be 50 years he did in prison. So I did it, you know, but I don't want nobody, man, to stuck with me, think that uh, I'm not grateful for them. Er, Keith, Clinton, Alice, you know what I mean? Kathy, Fran, Tammy, you know what I mean? Cookie. Uh, so many people, I'm thankful for you, man. I'm thankful for you, man. You reached out to me and you ain't had to, you know what I mean? Uh, but man, Eric and uh, Lil Keith and my god brother Clint Turd, man, they they a godsend, man. Just made sure they was there every time I said I was gonna call. Sent me money every time I said it's pictures. Took care of all my bills. They were so excited when I was coming home. Eric told Mark when he said, "Guess who coming home?" You know, we tried to keep it hush hush, but you know, once word got out, right? And uh, Eric told Elijah's Khadijah brother. You know, these was happy to find I was coming home. But man, uh, my ex-wife, Betty. But man, uh, LaSan, Lady, Tina, Kathy, Alice. So many people, man, helped me through this journey, Lord brother. And, uh, and that's why I couldn't give up. Too many people uh, uh, depended on me to stay strong and hold on, man. You know what I mean? I used to think about your father. You know what I mean? I was crushed when you wrote me and told me he was gone. I wanted to see Larry again. You know what I mean? But I'm just so thankful to a lot. Lulu out here, Earl Cone Bay, Naughty, Strickland, Gene Cunningham, so many dudes, man, who they never thought would be out here is out here together. Strong men, strong warriors. Dudes that never gave up. Wally Homicide. Cooley Hill, you know what I mean? Hey, let so, me ask you this. Uh, you mentioned how you met uh, uh, the Unabomber. So uh, can you explain to the people how you met Larry Hoover? Yeah. His lieutenant was in the unit with me and uh, one of his Big old tall dude out of Chicago. He said, man, uh, who was Lieutenant Second in Command want to meet you? I said, where he at? He said, he, when he come off the wreck, he gonna come to your window. I said, uh, all right. What's his name? He said, Shorty G. He had just come from Leavenworth. They say when he walked down the hall, 50 and 100 GDs be him. He had too much power, so he got to get out of here. So they sent him to Marion and Marion. So anyway, Shorty, Shorty G came to my cell. He said, man, I heard about you, man. They say you, they say you big like my boss. I said, your boss? I said, you got a boss? He said, yeah, I got a boss, Larry Hoover. I said, you call him your boss? He said, that's what he is, he's the chief. He said, you got to meet him, man. He got to meet you, man. I said, all right. So I went to the program, and they locked me up. And when they locked me up, they put me over there in the unit with Mustafa, Nassir, Willie Horton, and some more brothers that used to uh, uh, be with the homies. Dude out of New Jersey, another brother out of Cali. 
And that homie Phil, Phil Johns, Cold Blood Gangs, Cold Blood Warriors. You love, you know Phil Johns, Phil Johns, Phil. Good man, man. I love this young homie. Used to be with me and Joe. So anyway, they put me over there and uh, they said Hoover downstairs. They said he'd be out on wreck with us. So when he came out, we shook hands. And the administration was behind the door with the ride squad, ride squad jump out when they want to run in the yard with the guns, with the rifles and the gas and stuff, right? They didn't know what was going to happen. So me and Larry Hoover shook hands and we walked in the yard and Silk, Mustafa, Phil, and Willie Horton, they standing back and Hoover's people standing back because they wanted to see what this powwow was going to be like. We filling each other out. He said, man, how old are you? He said, I'm two years older than you. He said, I've been in the game longer than you. I said, so what? You know what I mean? But we cutting up, chopping it up. The dude got a brilliant mind on him. Super smart. Super smart. Now he done mellowed out. You know what I mean? He telling all his fathers, man, we about programming, helping the youth, stopping the violence. You know what I mean? Because he really was, had uh, Jesse Jackson, them come to see him. A lot of people, large, small, old country be trying to help because he's got a brilliant mind. But he got so much influence over the GDs and every time that foolishness ha happened in the city, the papers and the courts blame him because they still got him down as a leader of the gangsters and cyprus. So we walking and meeting, he telling me how he started and who brought him in. And, you know, I mean, I don't want to call no name. And, you know, give me his history. I'm giving him my history. He used to ask me about lacking them. And uh, we got a lot of similarities, but different styles. Follow me? Uh, you know, D.C., we got our own style. We got our old vernacular, you know, the way we talk way we walk, the way we act, you know what I mean? So, he's a bona fide leader. And he leads with brilliance. So that's how we, and, and, well, I met him through his Lieutenant Shorty G, because Shorty G said, boss, that's him right there. And uh, he got a lot of principles, a lot of morals, man. But I'm gonna fight him. I'm gonna fight him every day I'm in. He a fighter too. He um, his brother is brilliant. And I don't say that about too many men. So we established a serious bond, man. I mean, I got a lot of respect for that brother. He got a lot of respect for me, you know. And we used to have some personal conversation talks that don't nobody know about. You know, we share things. You know, he gave me his whole childhood history. I gave him my childhood history, how I started, how he started, how I became who I am, how he made his ranks and his bones, and how he took over, you know. It's got a lot of similarities, man. You know what I mean? It's just that uh, different styles and different cultures and different systems. You know what I mean? But the format is the same. Yeah, him and Mustafa must have been cool because he sent me some books one time when him and Mustafa was together. Mustafa loved him. Mustafa loved him. But he loved Mustafa. Mustafa loved him. Mustafa loved him. He loved Mustafa. You know, you know, Mustafa was like the baby of the bunch. You know what I mean? Any old time to get out of line, I got him. I said, I still got a couple of them. I can get him. But, at, but the agreement was... You got one minute to get your man. If you ain't got him in one minute, we're going to crush everybody coming. You know what I mean? 